Little Dirk, on his Instagram story, posted this, quote, Stop buying all this jewelry without knowing what you're doing. A lot of this shit fake and some is overpriced. Get one jeweler and stick to them. I'm telling you, y'all ask to be pissed when the truth come out. End quote. What are your thoughts on that? I agree. It is a lot of fake jewelry out here. There's a lot of people getting scammed. And it's, I mean, if you don't have a relationship with your jeweler, then they is going to bust your head wide open. <laughs> I mean, I personally didn't probably got my head bust open like probably once or twice in the beginning, but I know better now. Now, before we go on any further, can you detail the jewelry you have on during this interview? Yeah, so I have a 16 millimeter Cuban baguette around my neck and uh, wifey did it, jewelry unlimited. He also did my Trap Girls chain. Um, it's also Baguette's. Uh, it's VVS's thing. <laughs> I have um, I have an AP on, you know, this rich bitch uh, <laughs> tendencies. <laughs> just, I'm just messing up. But yeah, I have an AP. And then I just got like a little cute um, accessorized Baguette little bracelet to go with it. Oh, this kind of this is kind of new and it's kind of um, it's my little favorite. It just lets you know that I love the hustle. Married to it? We ain't married yet, but um, we're twin flames. We're soulmates. <laughs> you know, eventually one day I want to retire the hustle and just you know enjoy like the wealth. Um, health, all of it. I want to be grinding for the rest of my life. So I think we just like, we just so makes we here. And then that other item you were about to discuss before I intercepted that. Yeah, there. it's just a, um, basically it's the baguette uh, bracelet as well. It's kind of popular right now. I think jewelry has its trends just like clothes have, has its trends. Um, one minute, you know, Rolexes are, like, popular. Everybody wants a Roly. Then is you know, Patek Philippe's. Everybody wants that. And then APs. It's just whoever is, like, whatever rapper is, like, popping at the time and they start rapping about it, then it's like, oh, everybody wants to get on that. Oh, you ain't, you ain't popping if you got an AP. You don't have an AP. You ain't popping if you ain't got a uh, Patek, Patek, whatever, like. But I didn't pop with the Rolly and the AP, so. <laughs> now, let's dissect some of these items even further. Let's okay. start back with the chain once again. Mm -hmm. When it comes to this chain and the phrase Trap Girls, for viewers watching this, getting to know you for the very first time, can you explain that name and that whole brand there? Trap Girls are hustlers, you know. I, I want to, like, Say you see the word trap, it automatically means that you um, you selling dope or something like that because we're not selling dope. Like trap girls is basically uh, by any means necessary, we get it done. Uh, whatever it takes to get it done, you get it done. Um, you either a serial hustler or you a shit eater. You either one or the other. <laughs> but no, our girls like we all hustlers. Um, some of them got jobs and so, and they hustle on the side, but it's the, it's the mentality of like, we just, we always thinking of ways to get money. Um, and we always, I mean, it, it's just about the bag. It's about the bread. It ain't about chasing like no rich niggas or no shit like that. It's just about strictly about getting to the bag. So if you do hair and you like that top bitch in the hair game, then, you know, I need you on a truck girl squad. Now, I use the word brand. I don't know if that was the correct phrase or not for it because you are in a duo with the same name as well, right? So is this a brand? Is this a duo? Is this a record label? Trap Girls is a record label. So I'm actually signed to Trap Girls as an artist. Um, it's not a duo. Like I said, it's... 
let me let me start from the beginning a little bit. <laughs> I don't want to go too fast. Uh, my whole vision of Trap Girls is I wanted to be the first female CEO. I wanted to, like, when I first started rapping, this was probably about back in 2016. You know, everybody used to be like, damn, like, you would be hard, like, to be, like, run with God in them or run with pre them. I'm like, shit, I want to be one of them niggas. I want to be a CEO just like one of them. Like, I want to, shit, I'm thinking of my stamp, like, what I want to call my squad. Like, I want to sign females. Like, I feel like no female in the game done it. Like, nobody, like, went on their CEO shit and, you know, signed females or even signed men. But, I mean, that's not my aesthetic. I want to sign, like, hard, hard ass, bad bitches. Um, I want to go to, I want to be, I want to go to the extent if, to, like, if I got, like, a bad ass chef and, like, I want to sign my chef. <laughs> I want her to be a female, though. Like, I want to be like, oh, she trap girls. You know, that's the trap girl chef. I want to sign my chef. I want to sign, I want to, you know, female producers. Like, I want to sign female producers. Like, that's the whole trap girls aesthetic thing. Like, boss bitches, that's, they own, they're, they're bosses. You know, they're in charge of their own ent entity. They running their shit. Like, they running, if, if, if she's a chef, then she should have, like, you know, little chefs under her or some shit, you know. Like, them, those are trap girls in my eyes. Like, that's my vision. So. Was there a duo of some sort, though, once upon a time? It was never a duo. Yeah. So I had an artist, and um, she was signed to me. And this was probably back in, um, this was this year, like, when I actually, the the top of this year, in January, when I was just like, I mean, it was really simple. It wasn't, it didn't end bad or anything like that. She was just like, she had a better opportunity. And she was like, when nobody messed with her because she was, you know, signed to Trap Girls. And I mean, if you got a better opportunity, then, you know, fly. So that's kind of what happened. Care to share that person's name? Not really. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's irrelevant. Okay. Now, when it comes to this chain, you mentioned this was Jewelry Unlimited. Mm -hmm. Why this jeweler for you, out of all the jewelers that could have customized a chain for you? Mm -hmm. Well, he has a... Um, he's reputable, for one. And he has relationships with people around me. So, I mean, that's kind of like how it went. It was like, you know, uh, these are my people. Take care of her. And that's how it kind of went, you know? <laughs> now, let's move forward. But I've dealt with other jewelers. Like, uh, a couple just icebox. Uh, they actually was, like, one of the first jewelers I had. Um, I bought my Rolex from Icebox. This was like back in uh, 2000 and um, probably like 15 or so or 16. I bought my first Rolex from them. And it was nice. It was a presidential. You know, it's real cute. I had some like, you know, nice little cubes around it. It was, you know, it was cute. I still have it. It's nice. Double click. So I'm not going to get rid of it because it's going to be worth some money when all this AP, you know, uh, Gossip go down and all that other stuff. You know, that roll is still going to be worth some bread. <laughs> and speaking of watches, you mentioned this is an AP. Does it get any more specific as far as model or that sort of thing? Um, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to be cute. I mean, I'm just going to be real. Like, I just felt like this was the cutest one for me. So, any meaning behind the wrist it's on? It's in not this like area? a skeleton or nothing like that, but I do have the Arabic numbers and stuff in it. What about the wrist it's on during this interview? Any meaning why it's on your left wrist? I was always told women should wear their watches and their bangs to the left. So, I mean, this is not standard. You don't think it's standard? I thought this. I mean, I thought this was like law or something. Like, you got to wear your watch or your lip on. Let's see what the comments say. If 
viewers are watching this and know the answer to that question, jot it down in the comments below. Now, <laughs> when it comes to just your hands or your wrists, are you naturally right-handed or left-handed by right. nature? I'm right-handed. I can't really do shit with my left hand, but maybe hold a bang or something and swoop. <laughs> but no, I'm right-handed, that's it. You mentioned you still have that Rolex. Mm -hmm. Do you ever wear two watches at the same time? I haven't got to that status yet. You know, I'm still grinding. I want to just put like two bus downs on and be like, I, I got so much time today, but no, I ain't got there yet. My my uh, Rolex, like she's a real classy girl, you know. I walk in, you know, I have to walk in different rooms with her, you know, and different rooms with her. And care to share the jeweler behind this watch? Yes, Wafi. Jewelry Unlimited as well. Yes. Now, even though you decided to go custom, or bust down, as some say. When it comes to the debate of custom versus factory, AKA bust down versus plain Jane, where do you stand on that now? I mean, factory is way more valuable than a custom watch. I mean, if you got insurance or whatever, you're going to get your money back. You know, God forbid something happens to it or something like that. But if you needed to just, like, sell your watch or something, like it, it'll be hard. I think it'll be hard to sell a bus down. Um, well, it'll be more easier and quicker to sell a factory watch over a bus down watch. And you mentioned bracelets as well previously mm -hmm. and the different names that they're called. Uh, but you didn't share the jewelers behind both of your bracelets. No, I actually got this whole little setup from Wifey. Okay. Yeah. The ring as well. The ring as well. He did it all. And yeah, he did all of this. <laughs> and can't see because of the hair, but are you wearing <laughs> earrings as well? Damn, I left them in my purse. But actually, it's so crazy, right? So I'm going to tell you a little story about my earrings. It's actually my bracelet. So the bracelet was, like, too long. And I'm like, you know, I just got these little two little pieces. And then, you know, that's, that's why it goes back to agreeing with dirt. Like, when you got a jewelry that, I mean, like a jeweler like that fuck with you, he like, you know, we just going to make them out some earrings. And boom, he just... And it was quick, too. I'm like, damn, this long as fuck. I don't need all this. You're going to give me a deal if I take, you know, you got to take them off. He was like, just make us some earrings. I was like, yeah, that's going to be Go put the little screws on there. <laughs> yeah. Now, for transparency, did you pay for this jewelry or was any of it for promo? No, I had to pay for mine. I ain't that lit yet. <laughs> I can't wait, though. <laughs> Care to share? How much this jewelry cost you back then? Yeah. So my AP was uh fifty some thousand. Um I probably could have got it for less, being that I had a like a out state ID or something like that. But I wasn't shipping my shit to Tennessee. It just wouldn't fit. <laughs> you know, you pull up at the jewelry store with that type of money, you want your shit right now. So no, um my AP was like fifty some which I know is worth like uh, probably 70 today. Uh, my bracelet was about 8,500 or something like that. And with tax, it went over like nine grand or something like that. Um, this was cute. This was like four grand. And this was uh, 7,500. And what about the chain oh, and, and the, the pendant? Okay, yeah, now the chain and the pendant, now that is a different goddamn story. So I would probably say total together, maybe like 70. So if my calculations are correct, that's about 140, give mm -hmm. or take, $140,000. Was that amount of money you spent worth it? looking at how everything's played out at this point? I think so. And what leads you to that answer? Because it's, it just comes with the territory. Like, 
I don't know why, but, you know, people respect, like, diamonds and jewelry, like, the aesthetic of things. Like, it's like people take you more serious. Like, oh, like, you really out here moving like that. Like, you know, you serious about this shit. You done spent some bread on your image and, you know. So, it's yeah, it's just I feel like people take you more serious when you – it's like the rapper's starter pack or something. Like, you need a chain. You need a watch. Or it's like you ain't doing nothing. Now, for someone watching this with no jewelry, what does $70,000 feel like around your neck? Oh, it's a bitch. I want to take it off every night. Like, every night I'm taking this shit off. I'm taking it off even before I even get in the, the house. Like, I'm in a car taking all this shit off. Like, <laughs> rings. I mean, like, everything is going out. Like, everything's good. Just get the fuck off of me. It's a bitch. And it's heavy. It's heavy for real. And I, this ain't like... <laughs> Now, zooming back out, when it comes to $140,000, for some people, this amount of money is the cost of an auto vehicle or real estate. Do you ever look at your jewelry in those terms? Like you have a car around your neck. You have a house on your body, so to speak. When you say it like that... <laughs> Yeah, it is. You do. It, it. It's a bit much. But, I mean, I didn't just walk into the jewelry store and like, oh, here go $140,000, which I done seen it done like hella times. I done seen like, I done seen some people walk in the store with 100 bands and buy this shit. I mean, I didn't do it like that. Like, I probably just came in and put like 20 grand down and then... Shit take about two months. So you got like two months to like constantly bring in, you know, X amount of cash to get your shit. And then I have a, um, I, have, I'm, I mean, I'm an Amex client, so. <laughs> they love me, you know. So I get the mouths and the jewelry. Now, what is your opinion on those who purchase jewelry first instead of the auto vehicle or the real estate. No, nah, nah. There's just too goddamn far. Now, real estate, I might understand a little bit. Like, it's a bit of a... Um, real estate is a big commitment, you know, like, far as you buying... It don't just stop once you buy the house or buy the land. Real estate is a big commitment. But it is a gift that keeps on giving. I promise you, I just got another check in the mail for, like, once I sold my house. I sold my house. I got the check. Then I'm, like, not even expecting something. I'm, like, damn, I got, like, 15 more grand coming in the mail, like, from escrow taxes. Like, who is this? Thank you. <laughs> you know? So real estate just kind of keep on giving. So, uh I mean, but like I said, it's a big commitment for it to keep giving. Like, you got the, you can't fuck up, you can't miss shit. Like, you got to be dedicated when you get the fucking with, you know, these people land and shit. Uh, but an automobile, now that's crazy. You cannot, like, be walking around with a $40,000 anything on, or even catching an Uber ride. With a 40, th nah, that's just crazy. Unless you just, if you got that type of money to fuck off on black trucks and all of that shit, then okay, I guess. I, guess. I don't know, why, why wouldn't a person have a car? And they got a chain. <laughs> now, if somebody can answer that, like a viewer watching this, again, drop that in the comments below. Because inquiring minds wants to know.